To make sense of CSS pseudoclasses, we need to understand state. In this context, the word state means a situation or condition that something is in at a particular point in time. Take the state of a stoplight, for example. At any point in time, it has one of three states. Red state, stop. Yellow state, accelerate. Oh, no, it's caution. And green state, go. When we talk about the state of the light, we're referring to one of these three possibilities. How is state related to pseudoclasses? Let's start a little differently here and jump right into a demo to understand the purpose of CSS pseudoclasses. Then we'll spend more time talking about what they are. We are back in our resume project exactly how we left it, with VS Code on the left and the browser on the right. Let's look at the link that we haven't yet styled. Notice it's currently blue and underlined. Mouse down on it and we see that it turns red. Click on it and it turns purple. So the anchor tag has multiple states, blue when it's not yet clicked, red when it's active, and purple when it has been clicked. The link we styled doesn't have any of that additional coloring. How do we style these anchor states? You guessed it, with pseudoclasses. Let's go back to the slides. A CSS pseudoclass is a fancy name for a keyword added to a selector. That keyword identifies the element's state to style. To add a pseudoclass to a selector, add a colon and the pseudoclass name. For example, a colon active adds the active pseudoclass to the anchor tag, so we can style the anchor when it's in its active state. As another example, here we use an ID selector and a pseudoclass to style this checkbox's check state. Many elements support pseudoclasses. Let's look at one in detail. An anchor element has four states. Link when that link has not yet been clicked. Visited when the link has been clicked. Clicking a link visits that linked page, hence the name visited. Hover when the mouse is hovered over the link. And active for the moment the mouse is clicked down on the link. It's recommended that these pseudoclasses be declared in this order because of the CSS precedent rules. We'll discuss precedence rules later in this course. In short, styles declared later override those declared earlier. For the anchor element, we want the active state to take precedence, which is why it's last. Now let's try out pseudoclasses on our anchor elements. Here in our resume, we want to move the links up as part of the header. In the index.html file, cut the two anchor elements and paste them into the header element. Wow, now they are really difficult to read. Let's go back to the style sheet and fix that. At the bottom, we'll add a type selector for the anchor and define a color of white. And we'll delete the color from the attribute selector here. That's better. Now we can see our links. But hovering over or clicking a link doesn't change color. And there's no change in color for the links we visited. As soon as we defined our own anchor element styles, we lost all of the styles for the states. Let's add them back. First, we change our type selector to include the colon link pseudoclass. Now we get back the default styles for the other pseudoclasses. But purple on green is really difficult to see. So let's add more selectors. We'll add an A selector for the visited state and set the color to white smoke. And add an A selector for the hover state and set the color to yellow. And lastly, add an A selector for the active state and set its color to orange. It's a little colorful, but it'll be easier to see what we've done. In the browser, hovering over the link, we see yellow. And mousing down on the link, we see orange. It works! But since at some point we clicked on these links, they appear in the visited state. These links will remain in that visited state while the visited page is in the user's browser history. Before we move on, let's change the order of the pseudoclasses. In VS Code, we'll move the hover state last. In the browser, Hover over, and we see yellow as expected. 
but mouse down to activate the anchor, and it's still yellow. That's because the hover state style is now taking precedence over the active state style since it's last in the style sheet. Going back to VS Code, let's undo our change. And in the browser, we see that the mouse down now displays the link in orange. Use these states as needed when you style your anchors. Now let's close the browser, and in VS Code, click the port number to stop live server. Then we'll go back to the slides. So, a pseudoclass is a keyword added to a selector that styles an element's state. We saw how to add pseudoclasses for anchor element states. Many other elements also have states, and we can style those states using pseudoclasses. For a list of all pseudoclasses, see the lesson links below this lesson. Next up, let's talk more about the other parts of style declarations, the styling properties, starting with color. Don't forget to like and subscribe.